I'm Danny. This is Asha. We're two Kiwis who, after five years living in London, bought a sailboat called Bacchus and set off on an adventure to sail home to New Zealand. We sailed the south coast of England, the Atlantic coast of France, Spain and Portugal, the Canary Islands and then all 19 days across the Atlantic Ocean to the paradise of Barbados. We spent six months exploring some of the beautiful islands in the Caribbean, got a little waylaid by a global pandemic, and are now continuing our voyage home. Follow us on our adventure. So we've been to the mountainous Marquesas, the unbelievably stunning Tuamotu Archipelago, and have now had the best of both worlds in the Society Islands. After three incredible months in French Polynesia, it's time for our penultimate stop. We've not had a remora since, where were we last? Tuamotos. Tuamotos. And Danny's just seen one under our boat now, which is quite exciting because we really like the remoras. We thought they were pretty cool. Come on, remoras. I've seen you. I know you're there. Oh, come on. Hey, there he is. Hey, buddy. How you doing? <laughs> big one, eh? He is really big. <laughs> his mouth is so funny on his head like that. So funny with that sticky kind of panel on the top for attaching onto a shark. So that was our overnight stay in Taha. Uh, next to right here. It's Taha there. And right here. So now we're just going to make our way out the pass on the other side and head to Bora Bora, our penultimate stop on this journey. Yeah. So it's quite a big deal. I'm feeling a little bit emotional about it that this is the last time we're going to go somewhere new. But all good things come to an end and we are also pretty excited to go home. And we're excited to go to Bora Bora. Yeah. Bora Bora, how cool is that? That's why Danny's put her party makeup on today. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking good. <laughs> no, in all honesty, people um, comment about our pink zinc a few, quite a lot actually, but when you're out all day in the sun and you've got skin like mine, you, you need something more than, I try and cover up, I wear a hat, I wear long clothes, put the bimini out when we can, but still the sun really gets me. So that's why I have this bright pink stuff on my face and the parts that get sizzled. Anyhow, uh, what have we got? 20... 27 miles, I think. 27 miles to go. Light winds forecast, so it might be a bit of a motor sail, but yeah. hopefully there's enough breeze out there for us to sail it. And then we'll arrive in Bora Bora. Yeah, exciting. Oh, we haven't seen dolphins in ages. Hey, guys. Oh, you guys can show us the way out. got a really tall mountain in the middle. Yay, we made it to Bora Bora. Sad about the weather, unfortunately. Uh, you can't really see any of the lovely colours of this place. There were some rain squalls that came through just as we arrived and the sky is now very grey. So as we came up the reef though it was still sunny and it was amazing the colour. There was so much green uh, like luminescence coming off the sand inside the reef, that famous turquoise Bora Bora sand, that it actually lit up the undersides of the clouds. The undersides of the clouds were like a teal green over the island which I've never seen before because so that was really pretty. So we've come into the lagoon, we're outside Bora Bora Yacht Club. You're actually not allowed to anchor anywhere in Bora Bora now. They brought in these rules a little while ago to protect the coral and the seabed and probably also to collect a bit of revenue off the yachties as well because you've now got to take a mooring buoy and you need to pay for that. So we've been told the charges are about 
$100 a week, which when you think about where you are and what a beautiful place this is, is not too outrageous at all. So we've just picked up a white mooring ball, which I hope is a visitor's buoy, uh, just outside the Bora Bora Yacht Club. And we'll be here for tonight at least. And then we might go check out some of the other parts of the island. We're going to go ashore either today or tomorrow and go speak to the gendarmes and figure out what we need to do to check out of French Polynesia when it's time for us to leave. And we'll start uh, getting ourselves all set to put to sea and head for Opua. Eagle-eyed watchers will notice that the anchor is no longer sitting on the bow roller. Uh, when we tie up to moorings, I take it off and stick it in the locker. And the reason for that is our rock has got a really sort of sharp chisel edge on the side of it. And it's right where the mooring lines uh, will run when the boat pulls back and the mooring lines kind of come forward. Uh, and my fear is that that anchor will just cut through one of those mooring lines if it's chafing on it. So to be safe, I Sometimes I just flip the anchor over and put it upside down in the roller so that the sharp edges are up high. Uh, or I just lift it off the roller entirely and drop it into the locker with a couple of fenders and then it can't really move around or hurt itself in there. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is Bacchus in mooring configuration. Yep, so yesterday when we arrived it was pretty grey and a bit rainy. So we went ashore to the village and went and spoke to the gendarmes there about checking out from Bora Bora and it's all good. So that's great that hopefully we can leave uh, next week with all the right paperwork. And this morning we got up bright and early and moved the boat out to the reef and it is just gorgeous out here. The colours just, they, they blow your mind, the greens and blues. And there's actually hardly any boats out here too so we've sort of got whole lot of beauty all to ourselves. Check this out. We're on the move again, just um, motoring over to the eastern side of Bora Bora to check out a couple of the mooring fields over there. Um, yeah, planning to leave in a couple of days, so one sort of last spot stop before we fill up one last time and then head off. Um, but the clouds are doing quite an interesting thing again today where they, um, they reflect off the, the bright green blue of the lagoon and, um, and reflect into the, the clouds. So the bottom of a lot of the clouds are, are green, which is quite cool to look at. Okay, so we've got the latest from Met Bob mm -hmm. on the weather. What does he have to say? Um, right, so there's a high 1030 to 1022 HPA east of North Island, near 160 west, mm -hmm. drifting north and weakening away by midweek. Mm -hmm. Be gone. Another high 1034 to 1026 HPA, travelling across the South Tasman Sea at 50 south Monday to midweek, mm. then weaker along the east coast South Island travelling to northeast. That could be good, because mm. what we want is a high to be parked just east of New Zealand, and then we want to come across on the northern side of that high, riding the, uh, the easterly winds. So how big was that high again? What was its pressure? Uh, 1034 to 1026. Okay, so, so it's a reasonably decent sized, to decent sized high. So hopefully that will stick around. Hopefully that kind of parks itself to the east of New Zealand and then we can we can use that. Uh, front over South Island on Monday, weakening over North Island on Tuesday. It won't affect us. No. Uh, low forming off Australia coast on Wednesday, near 35 South, then going south, southeast to south of New Zealand by Friday. So again, that will be gone. Cool. So that should, those low pressure systems typically just go and sit down in the roaring 40s and scream across towards South America and yeah. underneath us so yeah hopefully that, be fine. Yeah, that won't affect us and then just as a general for the coming season important differences are expected between the western and eastern halves of the southwest pacific basin and also for early and late season activity mm -hmm. elevated tropical cyclone presence is expected in and around the coral sea and the north tasman sea especially during the late season between february and april reduced okay. tropical cyclone activity is expected east of the international dateline Okay, so less chance of a cyclone hitting French Poly this year, 
more chance of one coming out of the Coral Sea, which those are the problematic ones for us at the end of the trip, where we turn left around Tonga, Fiji and head down towards New Zealand. Yeah. We can get whopped by a Coral Sea one, but it sounds like they're, they're yeah. not expecting them to get active until later in the season, yeah. by which time we'll be well and truly home. Yeah, it says the potential start to cyclone activity may occur close to or after the new year, so... Perfect. We're going to be home so in November, so... nothing yeah. strange happens between now and then. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Yep, so all still looking pretty safe. Possibly quite nice if that high goes and sits itself over. Yeah. New could Zealand be. before when we get there. Could be really good, yep. Yeah. So when we're passage planning uh, for these big offshore trips, which we're doing soon from French Polynesia back to New Zealand. Uh, we use a piece of software called Predict Wind, which is a paid for service that uh, it's a New Zealand company, New Zealand weather forecasting company, and we can download those forecasts on our little Iridium Go outfit. Uh, we also are subscribed to the blog of a guy called Bob McDavitt in Auckland. He's a very experienced meteorologist. He sends an email once a week, which has a synopsis of the weather in the South Pacific. And of course, I'm talking to other cruisers because there's other boats out there with people that have done this trip hundreds of times and they know so much more than I do. When I'm downloading the forecast on Predict Wind, I'm downloading two forecasts. One which covers the whole region between New Zealand and French Polynesia, which is about 2,500 miles, and is a long range forecast that goes out to two weeks. Now, a long range forecast like that, once you get past four or five or six days, I think they become a bit unreliable. It gives you an idea of what the weather might be, but it's certainly not set in stone. Uh, so with that forecast, what I'm looking for is a big high pressure system, hopefully, parked to the east of New Zealand, and that'll give us nice trade winds that will take us across the top of the high pressure system and down to New Zealand. If I see a low pressure system coming across there, uh, our options are either to wait and not leave, or to try and get south of the low, because lows turn clockwise in the southern hemisphere and south of the low we'll have those easterly winds that will take us towards New Zealand. The second download that I'm doing is a shorter range, maybe only five days, and a higher resolution forecast just covering French Polynesia. And because I can predict the weather a little bit with a little bit more certainty in that first kind of five days, I'm looking for helpful winds to get us on the way. Uh, we don't want to leave French Polynesia and just flop around for days in no wind. At the moment the forecast is looking like it is going to be very light at the beginning, uh, but hopefully we can find some more trade winds uh, further out there. So that's us every morning really, downloading the forecasts and looking over them and comparing them to what they were and how they might have changed. Uh, so we do that with coffee each morning and yeah, we're hoping to leave uh, next week sometime. We spent our first few days in Bora Bora on the western side of the island and we pretty much had our pack of any mooring we wanted. There were hardly any boats over there. It was, it was quite strange really, but um, it was beautiful. Um, and we went to a few different spots and then decided yesterday to come round to the eastern side of the island, which was a little bit of a tricky manoeuvre through some shallow, skinny passages. But we found where all the boats are. There's not heaps, but still, I don't know, probably about a dozen boats here. And you can see why it is a really, really beautiful spot for anchoring, well, for mooring. Um, and yeah, we've just been hanging out here. So. We are going to chuck pee back in the water and go find a good snorkeling spot this afternoon. And then we really have to think about going back to the other side of the island to um, fully check out and get ready to go. So today's probably our last like proper day of just island exploring before we head home. It's a bit sad, but it is really beautiful here. What are you doing, Asha? Um, so I've had a bit of a problem with my um, rash shirt that I wear to stop myself getting sunburned. And it gives me a rash uh, on my nipples. So I'm trying Vaseline on my nipples today to see whether that relieves the friction. <laughs> I feel very silly. Off we go to find a snorkeling spot. So, here 
top off it being a little wooden dinghy. We don't normally take her off and anchor her and jump in. Uh, she's just a little bit awkward to get in and out of, but um, today we are going to do that. We're going to anchor her um, just off this really nice little spot here that we hope to see some interesting things in the water. Probably some stingrays, hopefully. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it a nudge. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Disaster last night. We had a whole lot of rain come through, and uh, this port light on Bacchus wasn't latched properly. Just one corner was undone, and so we've had a lot of water trickling in all over the passage berth where we sleep when we're on passage, and all through the library as well. So all the books are waterlogged. So it's pretty disappointing. And we were thinking about leaving today, so it's not ideal. No. Bollocks. Bollocks. It's silly, but both Danny and I can't help but feel a little bit superstitious about this influx of water that's come into the cabin. Of all the port lights on Bacchus and hatches that could be left open, this is the one that sort of creates the most issues for being on passage because it soaks the bed that we sleep on uh, and it's also soaked the library which is going to take the longest to dry out. Of all the other hatches and port lights that could have been left open that's the one that kind of causes the most disruption and I got up last night when it started raining and I checked that everything was closed and I ran my hands along that port light in the dark and I didn't feel that it was unlatched and then came out in the morning and saw that it clearly was on one corner and uh, and all the water had poured in. Last night we were looking at the weather and the plan was to leave on Tuesday which is tomorrow um, but last night we were looking at the weather and we actually thought oh Monday actually looks all right let's bring our plans forward a bit we'll get all our jobs done as quickly as we can in the morning uh, and let's go on Monday which is today. 
uh, and then this happens. So you kind of have this like nagging feeling in the back of your head that the universe is telling you not to put to sea today until you've dried your library and dried out your bunk. So we'll see, I'm downloading a new forecast now. Um, we do have quite a few jobs to do before we leave, so it'll be a bit of a rush to leave today, but yeah, we'll see how we get on. I'm feeling really liberated about the food that we've got on board because we're so close to the end of the trip now, I can just kind of eat anything that I find. I don't, <laughs> there's no need for me to save anything. So I've just been digging around here and I've found like four little things of cream, uh, which are all going to get eaten before we get back to New Zealand. And I found seven of these uh, cheese in a box. What are those, Asha? Talk, talk to me about what those are. This is 250 <laughs> grams of the world's finest processed cheddar. Uh, I'm sure it's got zero nutritional value, but it's delicious. I'm not sure it's cheese, but every um, ask any cruiser in French plus in French Polynesia and they will have these on board. Everyone's got cheese in a box because it's so cheap. I think it's price controlled. They're a dollar eighty each and And you don't have to keep them in the fridge. You don't have to keep them in the fridge, they just live in the cupboard. So. They are one of the best. We also have butter in a tin, don't we? Butter in a can, yeah where's that? Look at this. We got so we've got actually got a lot of butter on board. We've got three of these tins and we've only got to go three weeks back to New Zealand and these are like almost 500 grams of New Zealand butter so so there'll be a lot of pastry and baking Yum, going on all the trip home what else have we got in there oh we got a few wraps we've got a jar of marmite which yes. is black gold for Danny uh, we've got tins of light cheese I've got one tin of sweetened condensed milk which is quite Ooh. exciting I'm gonna get into that uh, oh some chocolate it's another three pack of chocolate <laughs> that's good this is like it's like uh, Christmas morning digging into the bottom of these cupboards and seeing what we've got left What's that? Pears. Yeah, that'd be nice. You're yeah, right. Ten pears. Out. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, so we're just stocking up all the cupboards in the galley now with as much food as we can and then that way while we're on passage we don't have to go digging around in the underneath the um, city too much. But yeah, getting ready to go. We'll do some pre um, pre passage cooking as well. We'll make a dal like we always do and I'll probably make a pie. And Asha, you were gonna do some. I'm gonna make a big batch of like. Big batch of bechamel. Bechamel, because we've got tons of butter. We've and got. Flour and we've cream. got the goods to make it, and it go, makes anything taste Amazing. good when you're out there at sea. So yeah, getting ready to go. So we did make the decision to delay departure yesterday. We didn't, just didn't feel like we were in the right headspace to head off on what is quite a big passage. Um, both of us were a little bit disheartened by the fact that the library was full of water, so we had 30 odd books that we had to try and dry, and yeah, the bed was all wet, and, and it was just a miserable day. There were squall after squall after squall blowing through, uh, and it pretty much rained the whole day. So we decided to stay put, so today is Tuesday and the weather is looking better. It's a bit grey and the sky sort of a, a lead colour out there. Uh, but there is a northerly breeze and we haven't had any squalls uh, since late last night. So hopefully it's a uh, nice easy sort of beam reach for us to head west uh, in that northerly. And the weather forecast is looking pretty good. Uh, we're expecting these northerlies for uh, a little bit two days and then we're going to have a period of quite light wind where we cross a transition zone uh, which is sort of a ridge of high pressure and then we should pop onto the other side of that uh, into the trades and then it should be a nice trade wind run all the way down towards Tonga and we'll keep an eye on the weather situation as we get closer to New Zealand and decide when we turn left. Um, so I'm feeling really positive about it. I'm excited for this passage. It's one that's been in the back of my head for a long time. Uh, I feel like we've been working our way up to this one. This is the biggest uh, in terms of the level of challenge, I think. So I'm, I'm hopeful that it's going to be smooth. Uh, I think Bacchus is ready. I think Danny and I are ready. And yeah, we're going to put to sea uh, for one last time on Bacchus and get her home. Underway. Much like when we left Brighton actually, you know, we were in such a rush to get out and leave that we kind of forgot that we were leaving. <laughs> and just then we were in quite a rush because we saw the man coming to take the jinglings off us, the money, to staying an extra night. So we are like, quickly let's go before he gets us. <laughs>
<laughs> so we've snuck uh, a free night outside the Bora Bora Yacht Club. Uh, I hope we're not going to get any bad karma for that. At 30 bucks a night, it's uh, it's quite a lot for a mooring. So oh, yeah, come on, we thought it was 100 bucks a week, and it's 30 bucks a night. So yeah, we've paid we paid a good whack to be here. Paid what, 170 yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the math on that. Yeah, and we've got a lovely breeze. I think it's going to be a really nice sail today. Yeah, we're feeling way better than yesterday. Yesterday we were not in the mood for starting a passage, um, and we both just said then like we feel good, we feel strong, we feel ready, we feel confident. So let's get the show on the road. All right, guys, this is it. Join us for our final passage home. I'm not gonna lie, it was a challenging one. Stay tuned.